Finally, 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 I have a GPU here that can ray trace ultra wide resolutions without needing to use upscaling as a crutch. This is a big step for ray tracing. And with ray tracing increasing so much faster than raster performance, gen over gen, I expect to see this kind of performance in mid range GPUs in a couple of generations, which will be a huge boon for the technology. Now, I won't keep you waiting any longer. Let's get into the benchmarks and see what a true ray tracing GPU looks like. We'll start off our ray tracing benchmarking with Cyberpunk 2077, the can it play crisis of our time, tested on its ultra ray tracing preset. Looking at a 3440 by 1440p ultra wide resolution, we see the RTX 4090 nearly delivering 60 FPS with raw ray tracing without any upscaling. This is a 49% performance drop from the raster average. And when we turn on DLSS, we see the frame rate increase 61% to deliver a high refresh rate gaming experience at 94 FPS. The 1% lows for the ray tracing results manage to stay in acceptable range, while the DLSS quality 1% lows are above 60 FPS in smooth range. At this resolution, even the ray tracing only results provide a fine play experience. Moving to our 3840 by 1600p ultra wide resolution, we see the RTX 4090 delivering 50 FPS, a 49% performance dip from the raster average. And when we turn on DLSS quality, we see the frame rate jump up 65% to an 82 FPS average, providing smooth gameplay. And when we look at the 1% lows, we see our ray tracing results dip into unacceptable range. And the DLSS results are now an acceptable range. At our super ultra wide 5120 by 1440p resolution, we are now seeing ray tracing results delivering an unacceptable 43 FPS average, 50% below the raster average. But our DLSS quality results are still providing smooth gameplay with a 73 FPS average, 69% faster than the ray tracing results. And when we look at the 1% lows, we see that the ray tracing results are an unacceptable range, but the DLSS results are still in acceptable range, providing a good gameplay experience. And at our highest resolution of 5120 by 2160, we are seeing the ray tracing results crash down to the bottom of unacceptable range, with a 31 FPS average, 49% below the raster average. And our DLSS results are now an acceptable range, with a 53 FPS average, 79% faster than the ray tracing results. The RTX 4090 is the first GPU to get anywhere near playable experience with the raw ray tracing results at any resolution in Cyberpunk 2077. And when we see the DLSS quality turned on, we are getting playable frame rates at every resolution, a first for any card. This is a very encouraging result that shows that even high quality ray tracing will be in the hands of mid-range gamers in a couple of generations. Next up, we have Shadow the Tomb Raider, one of the OG ray tracing games. This game really shows us how far we've come in ray tracing power. This game was played on its highest preset with ultra ray tracing shadows turned on. At 3440 by 1440p ultra wide resolution, even with ray tracing turned on, we are seeing some stellar frame rates of 145 FPS, 27% drop from the raster average. And when we turn on DLSS quality, we get another 19% performance for our 172 FPS average. Now, when we look at the 1% lows, we see that the ray tracing results are actually higher than the DLSS results. With an already stellar ray tracing frame rate, I would just not bother using DLSS at this resolution. Stepping up to 3840 by 1600p ultra wide resolution, we still see the RTX 4090 still hitting over 120 FPS in this title, with ray tracing on, with 129 FPS average, only 30% behind the raster result. When DLSS quality is turned on, the average frame rate jumps to 162 FPS, an increase of 26% over the ray tracing average. But when we look at our 1% lows, we see both rendering techniques maintain a 100 FPS average, which indicates we're at some kind of bottleneck with our 1% lows. At our super ultra wide 5120 by 1440p resolution, we see a 115 FPS average, a 31% performance drop from the raster average. And when we turn on DLSS quality, we see a 33% increase in performance, delivering 152 FPS average. And when we look at the 1% lows, we see that the ray tracing results are challenging enough that it drops off of the 100 hertz peg. But when DLSS is turned back on, once again, we see a 100 FPS cap for the 1% low. And at our final resolution of 5120 by 2160, we see an 85 FPS average for a smooth gameplay experience that is 31% slower than the raster average. But when we turn on DLSS quality, we see a massive increase of 49%, delivering better than raster performance of 127 FPS. When we check out our 1% lows, we see the ray tracing results in smooth range with 70 FPS and our DLSS results just below the 100 Hz cap. The RTX 4090 is able to provide extremely playable frame rates at every resolution without even needing to use upscaling. 
At our lower resolutions, you're not really getting much from your upscaling due to the 1% lows being stuck at 100 FPS. So only at our super ultra wide resolution does it really make any sense to use upscaling since it has monitor options that can use up all that frame rate. But at our 4K ultra wide resolution, the RTX 4090 is providing more FPS than any panel at this resolution can display. No matter what resolution you play this game at, you're gonna have a stellar experience. Next up, we have a game for our racing fans. Forza Horizon 5 is played on its extreme preset with extreme ray tracing turned on. Looking at the 3440x1440p 1440 results, we see the RTX 4090 getting 131 FPS average, a mere 7% drop from the raster average. And when we turn on DLSS quality, we see an 11% performance improvement, getting us to better than raster performance of 145 FPS. When we look at the 1% low results, we see both cards hitting 100 FPS, but the DLSS doesn't seem to improve the 1% lows the same way it does for the average. At our 3840x1600p ultra wide resolution, we see a 124 FPS average with a ray tracing result, a 7% dip from raster average. When we turn on DLSS quality, we see a 14% improvement, now delivering 141 FPS. When we look at the 1% lows, we see both DLSS and ray tracing are at 99 FPS. At the super ultra wide resolution of 5120x1440p, we see the ray tracing results just fall out of very high refresh rates, with a 118 FPS average. 8% slower than the raster average. Turning on DLSS quality, we see a 14% performance increase for another better than raster result, delivering 134 FPS. When we look at the 1% lows, again we see both RT and DLSS deliver the same performance in the mid 90s. And at our highest ultra wide resolution of 5120 by 2160, we see our ray tracing results deliver 106 FPS average, 9% slower than the raster. When DLSS is turned on, we see a 19% increase in FPS to 126 FPS. Once again, the 1% lows are the same between the ray tracing and the DLSS results. The RTX 4090 sees good frame rates and 1% lows no matter what rendering technique you use. DLSS all on its own isn't bringing much extra performance. Thanks to Forza not scaling in performance much with resolution, if you really want to max out your 240Hz monitor, you'll need to try the newly added frame generation. Next up we have the 2023 Action RPG Forspoken, played on its Ultra preset which has all RTFX turned on. Starting with 3440x1440p results, we see the RTX 4090 delivering high refresh rates of 92 FPS, only 15% lower than the raster average. And when you turn on DLSS quality, performance has increased 25% for a better than raster 115 FPS. When we look at the 1% lows, we see both ray tracing results and the DLSS results in smooth refresh range, with no bottlenecking in sight. Moving to our 3840x1600p ultra wide resolution, we see smooth refresh rates of 82 FPS, 16% lower than the raster results. And when we turn on DLSS, we get a 30% performance increase, getting us back into high refresh rates with a better than raster 106 FPS. When we look at the 1% lows, we still see both the ray tracing and the DLSS results in smooth territory. Moving to the super ultra wide 5120 by 1440 resolution, we see the ray tracing results stay in smooth range, with 70 FPS average, 18% drop from the rash performance. And when we turn on the DLSS quality, we see a 36% performance increase, bringing us back to high refresh rates at 95 FPS. When we look at the 1% lows, we now see that the ray tracing results are in an acceptable range, with a 53 FPS average, while the DLSS results are still in a smooth range with a 68 FPS average. And at our final resolution of 5120 by 2160, we see the average for the ray tracing results finally dip below smooth range to a 56 FPS, a 17% drop from the raster performance. When we turn on DLSS quality, we see a performance increase of 45% for a smooth gameplay experience at 82 FPS, significantly above the raster performance. And when we look at the 1% lows, we see the RT results still hang on to acceptable range, and the DLSS results still above 60 FPS. The RTX 4090 is seeing a 15% increase in performance from launch, which has turned what was once a bit of a struggle at the 4K ultra wide resolution to a breezy walk when DLSS is turned on. The last game in the roundup is Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy played on its ultra preset with RT reflections and transparent reflections turned on. At 3440 by 1440, we see our ray tracing results achieve very high refresh rates of 133 FPS, 33% slower than the raster average. When DLSS is turned on, we see an increase in performance of 24% to a 165 FPS average, which seems to be CPU limited. When looking at the 1% lows, we see both RT and DLSS are in high refresh rates, with the DLSS results being bottlenecked. 
Moving to 3840 by 1600p alt wide, we see high refresh rates of 115 FPS, 42% below the raster average. When DLSS quality is turned on, we see a 44% performance increase to 165 FPS, possibly still bottlenecked. And when we look at the 1% lows, we see the RT results in smooth range, and the DLSS results with the same high refresh rates as the 3440 by 1440p ones. At our super ultra-wide resolution, the RT results are still in high refresh rates at 97 FPS, 46% slower than the raster average. When DLSS is turned on, we see 54% performance increase to 149 FPS, finally no longer bottlenecked. When we check out the 1% lows, we see a smooth refresh rates for the RT result and high refresh rates for the DLSS results. Even at our highest resolution of 5120 by 2160, we are seeing smooth refresh rates of 73 FPS, a 49% drop from the raster average. When DLSS quality is turned on, we see nearly 120 FPS, or a 63% performance gain. And looking at the 1% lows, we see our first dip into acceptable range for the RT results, and smooth frame rates for the DLSS results. The performance hit in Guardians of the Galaxy for turning on just reflections is pretty steep. At 5120 by 2160 it matches the performance cost of Cyberpunk 2077 while delivering far fewer ray tracing features and visual splendor. But you're starting from such a high average frame rate to begin with, it doesn't much matter. Now let's bring it all together and see what kind of ray tracing performance we can expect from the RTX 4090 at each resolution. Starting off with our most popular resolution of 3440 by 1440 we see an impressive average performance for the ray tracing results of 112 FPS. With an 83 FPS 1% low, this is more than just a playable frame rate. It is quite a good one. And when DLSS quality is used, things move up into very high refresh rates of 138 FPS, with high refresh rate 1% low of 92 FPS. When running DLSS, you're only sacrificing 9% performance on average. When we look at the per game results, we see the ray tracing with three very high refresh rate games, one high refresh rate, and one acceptable refresh rate. When we look at the 1% lows, we see four games above 60, and one in acceptable range. And when we look at the DLSS quality results, we see three games in very high refresh rates, two in high refresh rates, with the 1% lows all above 60 FPS. Despite some bottlenecking happening, when using DLSS, I can recommend the RTX 4090 for anyone seeking a ray tracing experience that feels uncompromising and who also has a bucket full of cash. At 3840 by 1600, we are seeing a very impressive performance with RT results of 100 FPS and a smooth 77 FPS 1% low. And with DLSS quality on, we are seeing very high refresh rates of 131 FPS with a smooth 89 FPS 1% low making the DLSS results only 8% slower than the raster average. Looking at the per game results, for ray tracing only, we see two very high refresh rate games, one high refresh rate, one smooth, and one acceptable refresh rate. As for the 1% lows, we see four games above 60 and one below. When DLSS quality is turned on, we now see three very high refresh rate results, one high refresh rate and one smooth refresh rate. As for the 1% lows, we see four games above 60, with only one falling short. The RTX 4090 can be recommended for anyone looking for an uncompromising ray tracing experience at this resolution. At our super ultra wide 5120 by 1440 resolution, we see the ray tracing results keep everything in smooth range, with an 88 FPS average and a 70 FPS 1% low. And when DLSS quality is turned on, we see the RTX 4090 still delivering a very high refresh rates of 121 FPS and smooth 1% lows of 85 FPS making the DLSS results only 6% slower than the raster average. Looking at the per game results for the ray tracing only, we see three games in high refresh rate, one with smooth refresh rates, and one with acceptable refresh rates. As for the 1% lows, we see three games above 60 and two below. When we look at the DLSS quality results, we see three very high refresh rate games, one high and one smooth refresh rate. As for the 1% lows, we see four games above 60 with one falling short. The RTX 4090 is an easy recommend for ray tracing at this resolution. And at our final resolution of 5120 by 2160, we still see smooth refresh rate averages of 70 FPS, but a 1% low that barely misses out on hitting 60 at an acceptable 58 FPS. When DLSS is turned on, we see high refresh rates of 102 FPS, and the 1% low recovers into smooth range at 77 FPS. With DLSS quality on, we're seeing no performance dip from the raster average. You are getting a no compromise ray tracing experience. Looking at the per game results for ray tracing only, we see one high refresh rate, two smooth refresh rates, one acceptable refresh rate, and one unacceptable refresh rate. As for the 1% lows, we see two games stay above 60, with three falling short. 
When we check out the DLSS quality results, we see two very high refresh rates, one high refresh rate, one smooth refresh rate, and one acceptable refresh rate. As for the 1% lows, we see four games above 60 with one falling short. The RTX 4090 is the only card I would strongly recommend for ray tracing at this resolution. Before we jump to the conclusion, I just want to say if you enjoy Altwide content like this, please like and subscribe. The bigger this channel gets, the easier it will be for me to get new hardware and games to test for all of you. Now let's jump into the conclusion. The RTX 4090 is a truly revelatory ray tracing experience, even when compared to the top end of last generation. We're seeing 4 out of our 5 games providing high refresh rates or better, without any sort of upscaling, which means the RTX 4090 is providing a native presentation for ultra-wide users for the very first time when ray tracing. Even Cyberpunk 2077 is nearly getting 60 FPS, only 1 FPS shy of smooth refresh rates. And with acceptable 1% lows, the RTX 4090 is still providing a playable native ray tracing experience in this game. For true ray tracing believers, this GPU is proof you don't have to sacrifice high refresh rates to enjoy ray tracing. And with DLSS on, you can achieve refresh rates that are so high the typical gaming monarch can't even achieve them. If a no compromises ray tracing experience is at the top of your list, then the RTX 4090 should be at the top of your shopping list. I know the price performance on this card is terrible, and even though the RTX 4080 can provide a nice ray tracing experience, hell, even the RTX 4070 Ti and the 7900 XTX can provide a good ray tracing experience at lower resolutions when upscaling. But those cards still feel like you're sacrificing when you flip that ray tracing switch, where the RTX 4090 really doesn't, and that feeling can be worth it to the right buyer. Speaking of pricing, the pricing on these cards online is crazy. They range everywhere from MSRP to well over double MSRP. And I can tell you right now, the coolers on the MSRP cards are amazing, and you don't need to spend more than 5-10% to over MSRP to get an amazing cooler on your RTX 4090. This Zotac Gaming RTX 4090 right here has amazing cooling and noise properties. And the only reason I even survived that 5-10% to extra is because I know that a snowboard or a weird spaceship design isn't everyone's preferred GPU aesthetic. When it comes to ray tracing right now, the RTX 4090 is the final word, but I look forward to the next couple of generations where I expect to see big gains in ray tracing performance, bringing this fascinating technology to the mainstream gamer. And my final words will be, thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already, so you can catch the comparison between this card and the RTX 4080 and the 7900 XTX in ray tracing. Or you can go ahead and watch the RTX 4080 go against the XTX in this ray tracing video here. Or if you really want to help this channel out, you can just go ahead and watch the full ray tracing playlist. Thank you and have a great day.